So, this talk is live code, it's called, I call this talk live code the Internet of Trees. Why trees? You will learn a moment, in a moment. Okay? Uh, first of all, I need to check one little thing, which we will going to use really soon. The camera, which is all white, but uh, you can show, you can, should be able to see stuff, also we can put it full screen. Yeah, it's all white, okay, yeah. Seems working, if it doesn't work anymore, please let me know. There are special effects that can cause the video to stop. I will tell you later if it happens. Uh, yeah, so, well, what's, what are we going to do? Uh, I have lots of hardware over here, hopefully. Uh, so you might know that this is a breadboard. If you don't know what a breadboard is, it's used to prototype hardware, okay? Uh, so what are we going to do? Uh, I need some more of my stuff over here that I have prepared. So I have hardware, hardware coming. Uh, yep. Yeah. You know, it's uh, okay. Uh, shit. <laughs> it's not. So okay. <laughs> So, the real huge problem with hardware is that you need to use cables <laughs> at some point. <laughs> and Macs only add two USB ports. So please, Steve Jobs turn evil and God has only two USB ports and I need three. So I have this shitty thing, which got even unplugged, because you also need power. So here we go. So I think we have all of it, almost. Um, can you hear me? Okay. I will try to speak loud. So. Here we go. Hardware. So, what are we going to use? We are going to use uh, a tassel. A tassel. So this is a tassel. Oh, hopefully, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I did. This is a tassel. It has a Wi-Fi chip, and it needs to be connected to the to USB. Otherwise, we don't have power. Okay. So you see it blinking. It's connected to Wi-Fi. Uh, so, what's the first thing you do when you get a new board? Any guesses? Blinking. Blinking LED, yes. So, this talks about blinking LED. So, this is my breadboard thing, where it sees, okay. This is my breadboard thing. So, I, this is a LED, you know about a LED. Uh, yeah, a LED is as a plus side, as a minus side. You attach it over here like this. Uh, you always need to put a resistor around your, to protect your lead, otherwise it will start uh, just, you will fry it, so it's not really useful anymore. So, what are we going to do is we are connecting it to the ground pin, where it is, come on, over here, this is the ground pin of the tassel, and we will get it to the lead, and then we need to trust our lead. So we will connect it to, for just for now to the whatever to the, the uh, five volts pin, and we'll start. Bling. Hopefully, it will start. Here we go. Oh! Yeah. So, <laughs> so we want it to play, right? So we connect it to another pin. Actually, I want to do some little bit more nice thing. I don't just want to blink it. I want to make it fade and pulse and be nicer about it, like, I just want to blink, okay? Uh, we connect it to this pin, Tesla has, to, in order to blink a LED, to, to pulse a LED, we need a pulse wide modulation pin, so because we need to go to different uh, levels of, of tension, okay? So you don't need just five volts, you don't need you might have some levels in the middle, okay? So, what we are going to do? We are going to, well, lots of stuff on my thing, so here we go. Uh, you can see this, right? Let me see when you can start seeing what I'm doing. Hopefully. 
Okay, so let's start doing uh, opening a file called tree.js, which is nothing. In order to use this, we it's a tussle, so we require the tussle. Okay, really easy. Then we need a port, so it's, this is connected to the GPIO port. So we can just say this port uh, GPIO. Nice. So we get our port. So then it's a, we need the pin to control it. So the pin is port PMW0, which is actually G4 on the board. Um, so we can address the pins on the Tesla in different ways, and this is one of them. Uh, later, what we are going to do? Well, we need, first of all, we need to tell the pin the pulse wide modulation frequency. And we set it to 10 kilohertz, okay? Which is not needed, but it's needed, it's needed by the board work. Uh, then we can pull stuff. So we can say pin duty cycle, which goes just half to the level we tell it is. So we can say, we can put it to 0 0.1. And after, uh, I don't know, two seconds, we can set it to, I don't know, 0 0.7, okay? So let's try running this, and with this hopefully we'll glow. Uh, hopefully. So this is still, you can see it. So in order to run this, we say Tessel run 3JS. <coughs> And if everything was fine, it takes a while, it's deploying the stuff to our Tesla. And I made a mistake because it's not what I, I did something wrong, uh, which the method does not exist. So let me detect what the method is because I don't remember. Really bad at this stuff. Um, Oh, oh, it's port, yeah. Uh, yeah, you need to set the, 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 the frequency not to the pin, but on the port. And let's try running this again. Hopefully it's packaging the thing, deploying it to the tessel, and hopefully it works. Seems not. Why? Well, turns out this is not a good idea. Uh, the main reason it's not a good idea is because you, you're not going to see it because it's just, it's just a, a little blink of, of stuff. So when you're going to do to handle the, the push and wide modulation, we need to get some midboard bad things. Let's say we have some states. So we start from 0, then we have 0 0.1, 0 0.2, and 0 0.5, and 0 0.7. Okay? So let's say that we have a set interval. Every two seconds, we we shift the, the state's ray. You should know about this thing, and otherwise we put one. So hopefully, this will work. You see, the tassel is bundling the thing, is packaging it, and sending it to the board, which it will execute it. Tassel is a board that runs JavaScript. Um, so. Hopefully, it's running straight, still nothing, really good. Is this connected? Come on, you know things, you think slide, you prepare the talk and it doesn't keep working. And let me try one little thing. And this is my thing. Uh, Oh, I definitely. Oh, yeah. Thank you. So I got, the, I got that somebody helped me debug the thing. Thank you. So hopefully this will work. And it was not the right thing. Still. 
Come on. Yeah. I should have been much faster than this. I mean, go over time as well. <laughs> okay, so I got a way to, to get it back. Uh, hopefully. Tassel 
works with NPM. So I can have a module called Pulse that I can use. I published it yesterday, so you know. Okay, so instead of doing this little thing, we can just call the my pulse module and pass the pin. And hopefully, if it works, even if it has an updated command line tool, I don't know what's happening with Tesla today. Uh, yeah, it should go. It should glow slowly. <laughs> so you can confirm. Uh, I can see down. <laughs> some focus. You can you can see that it's dimming and getting better. So um, well, we can even control it a little bit more, uh, and we can do it by passing some uh, some properties and. And we can like say let's make a let let make it blink like you know we can pulse but we can also blink with this library and hopefully it's blinking seems not. Not. Yeah, I killed the script. Unplug the tassel. Can you use hmm? yeah, the Yeah, this Okay, uh, yeah. Oh, it's not states, it is, come on, it's steps. That's my fault. So, it is. Uh, yeah, it should deploy bundle. So it's you see it blinking. Okay? So I can blink a So uh, what can I do? Uh, well, the main point is that we can we have just built a Christmas tree. This is the blinking light that you can see it or pulsing or whatever. If you have mice around your Christmas tree, you may buy maybe it's an Cinderella or whatever, it's not really our thing. <laughs> or you can get a train and I don't have any help for you. Uh, well, we can do something more. Uh, we can control our uh, Tesla as Wi-Fi, so we can control our Tesla from, uh, from the internet. How can we do this? So we kill our script, hopefully it worked, didn't die. We can use a lot thing called MQTT. Uh, uh, MQTT is, is it's a protocol and it's a node module. I already installed it, so we can just create a, a, a client and and connect to a broker that's running on my laptop to a Wi-Fi network I created. So I just reconnected it uh, and it's connect actually. So we pass MQTT and I think this one. Hopefully it works. It will work. Uh, we need to subscribe to something because it's a public subscribe protocol, right? So let's call it tree. I'm Matteo, and this is a wild, a wild card, so it will get all the comments. Uh, then we can, when we receive a message, we can do some stuff. We can uh, receive a topic which was published and the payload. Uh, and on the topic, what we, what we need is just a comment, so we just uh, replace the topic, the, the, the base part of the topic, which is tree Matteo, and to nothing, and then you can do a switch. You know, you like switch, right? This is the community that likes switch. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, so start. So when we start, we just pulse. And when we stop, oh, how we end stop? <coughs> so my module, why I brought this module, actually, it's because I wanted a simple way to, to stop it, to stop the pulse, so we need a stop variable over here. And when we pulse, we just stop. We can just call stop. So if we have a, a stop thing, we call stop. Nice. And then we stop, it becomes not. So how do we control it from, from, from the network? 
Uh, well, so this is the end. Hopefully, I didn't forget anything. So hopefully, yeah, the point bundle maybe is JavaScript. It's not some weird thing. Oh, okay, running script. So it's doing nothing. How do we control it? Oh, subscribe. Nice one, Matteo. <laughs> um, yeah, it was valid JavaScript, but I made a syntax error. Uh, I call that useless thing. This keep not being working. Okay, so run again. We use this little library called uh, Mosquito. Uh, it's a broker and some command line tools. Uh, we, yeah, whatever. Um, and we can pass nothing as a message, and hopefully, uh, well, not t three js, but three slash Mateo slash start. Five lines of code, I did, I control it from the internet. So what we can do next? Uh, well, we can remote control our three lines. MQTT, it's a public subscribe protocol, whatever. Somebody publishes, somebody else subscribes. Doesn't matter. That has some properties that I don't have time to, to talk about. <laughs> uh, yeah, I can also uh, remote control it for my HTML5 presentation. Each web application can connect to MQTT. MQTT also run on top of WebSocket. I still need you for okay. five minutes. Okay. So uh, I can do the same thing. Actually, this needs to be something different. Let's ch change it and uh, let's change our three thing and, uh, to something else over here. So it's you can see the difference. So we deploy it to the test cell and oh. Keep not working. My laptop has some something really broke. Coming here from the, the hotel this morning, this morning went to the presentation. Everything was working fine. So we get we are getting this over here, and we can hopefully start it. If you see, I've I've run my thing on on three, and this is just working. Uh, it, okay. So uh, well, uh, we can even control it a little bit better. Uh, so we can actually control it by passing some, some parameters. Uh, passing parameters is easy because if payload exists, uh, we can actually parse it. So we can parse a JSON, and this will crash if it's nothing. So we just say try and catch. And if it's not there, we just return. Goodbye. And or else we just say payload is a thing. And this is console log error just because we can. So uh, also we need to stop it before changing it. So otherwise we get different commands at the same time we need to stop one post to, to start the other. Uh, so here it is uh, and we need to pass the payload over here. Okay? So we can hopefully control it from and uh, change the way it works. So we can run it and, you know, hopefully, oh. Oh, you can see it blinking. Um, blinking again. Uh, what can we do more? Well, we can do some other, we can do some other nice stuff. I have an Arduino over here. We can plug it to, to the uh, to this cord. One more, one more thing that can doesn't can work. <laughs> so okay, so this is the okay. So I have I can connect the, I, this potentiometer. It's just a thing that I can use to, to read a voltage, uh, to control a voltage, and you can guess what you are going to do. So uh, I will need some things. I will need to plug this to the ground. Over here, ground. And this other one to 5 volts. And here we go. We are trying to go special effects, you know? So we have HU 
over here, uh, over here, and A3. Over there. Okay, so what's that? Oh, so you crashed Chrome. You did? Yeah. <laughs> you should not see this, right? <laughs> okay. So here we go. Uh, we get we got back. So uh, what is what's happening? I connected these two potentiometers that I use to control my tree. Hi tree. So uh, what you're going to do is we are actually creating a new window. Uh, I don't. I'm running low on time, unfortunately. So I'm just copying the the thing from the full like, the full presentation. Uh, so what's bot.js? Bot.js is using Johnny Five to control my Arduino. If you don't know Johnny Five, is a library to control Arduinos. Okay. Uh, I got two sensors. One is connected to pin A3. One the other is connected to pin A2. And one one value changes. I'm just polishing stuff via MQTT like I did before. Okay? So let's try running this. Hopefully this doesn't fail me. Okay? So yeah. If you see it's changing. So let's switch back to over here. Over here, put it. Oh, okay, thank you. So this is low. We can make it. Ah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so you can control your your thing like you will control a, a a music speaker. Okay, and change and do crazy stuff. Uh, yeah, I have some little more stuff to follow. Prima Street, I stay there. Do a tree. Uh, I have a little LCD over here to put on my tree. But unfortunately, yeah, so you should, hopefully you should see this to put on my tree, hopefully. Okay, uh, so I can type something like Budapest, and it will be Budapest, okay? Yeah, so everything is remote control via MQTT. Uh, also, I can control it like from the uh, also from my uh, HTML5 slides. Uh, I also have an infrared temperature sensor, which is in my hand. This is a blue sensor tag. This is a sensor tag. It's a little thing from a Texas Instrument. I have some slides, but I will not get to them. And I can get the temperature to my, through my LCD. And all this pass through my uh, my slides. Okay, this is a sensor tag, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> uh, I can control it my slides to my LCD. So you can see it over here, you can see it next, and if I go back, you see prep. And this is how I'm controlling my slides. Also, the slides are controlled via MQTT. Yeah, it's what's on it, whatever. Uh, yeah, these are the of things. Uh, so, uh, I also did a MQTT broker called Mosca. Um, Mosca is what you can use in your application to use M to build MQTT enable application on the cloud. So you use MQTT on the things and you use MQTT broker on the cloud. You can actually embed it in your app so you can actually build uh, Internet of Things applications really quickly. Uh, use some stuff, support WebSocket out of the box. It doesn't make MQTT JS file. You can just embed in your HTML, HTML application and you are good to go. It's kind of scalable or whatever. Uh, there is a test instance as testmosca.io. So this is me. Uh, I do open source stuff, as you can see. So I, this year I didn't take any vacation. Shame on me. I will get this sorted very soon. Uh, this is my stuff. And uh, I work for a company called Mirform. And thank you. <laughs>